The home inspector said, it's a great house. You're getting a great house. Did he even talk about this? Cosmetically, it's great. Oh, wow. Look at that. It's what's underneath. You have a hazard home oh, for absolutely. you and your family. So you have a lot to worry about. I'm worried. This is going to be a very big job. Chantal and Dominic, they were looking for a house that was a healthy environment for both them and their four kids. They didn't have a big budget. They were looking for a house that was a turnkey operation. They did the right thing. They brought in a home inspector to take a good look. He said everything was great. Well, obviously not, because I'm here. I'm going to ask some questions. I'm going to get some answers. I'm going to do a thorough inspection, and I'm going to make it right. So we have four kids at the ages of 17 to the youngest is two years old. So we're the six of us living in a three bedroom apartment, one full bathroom. So we were all sharing a shower. Yeah, so that was definitely interesting. And then just problems really just started happening. Mold was growing. There was the, the balcony started leaking into, into the living room as well. So it was just, it was a disaster. We needed to move. You know, we saw a, maybe a million and one houses. Uh, the day we saw this house, um, we probably saw 15, 20 houses. We were looking for four bedrooms, at least two bathrooms, two full bathrooms, so that we'd have two showers, a nice backyard for the kids to run around in, a dishwasher. My son requested a dishwasher because uh, he was the dishwasher in the apartment. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as we walked in, we were sold. Just the feeling you got when you walked in. We loved it. We said, this is, this is it, this is home. The home inspector that we did choose for the house was actually um, through our realtor. It was July. He came in, and he was here probably about half an hour before we got here. He seemed to have done a thorough job. After going through the house, he said that uh, it's a great house. You're getting a great house, nothing at all, that we would have to do big renovations. You must be Chantel. Yes, I'm Hi, Mike. Mike. Nice to meet you. Nice to Dominic, meet you. Dominic, how you doing, man? Good to see you. I hear you're a soccer guy. Yes, yeah. I am. OK, I'm outside. Right away, I see things. So why don't we start on the outside and just take a walk around? OK. OK. What we're beginning to see with this house is, cosmetically, it's great. It's what's underneath. So it's actually in the body of the house that's, uh, those are the concerning things. OK, so you have a carport that appears to be running to the house. And right away, I can see the downspout right here. And that is a new extension. I don't think that was ever there before. Because there's no evidence whatsoever of any type of a scupper drain or any drain here at all. Mm -hmm. And I think that the water kept running and hitting the wall so much and staining all yeah. this wall that someone said, oh, you should put in a, like a downspout connection and put it into the weeper mm -hmm. to help pick it up. Because I really think it was driving against the house. And this may have been something really simple that whoever built this didn't have a level or any common sense, that's for sure. Because you don't want it running towards the house. Right. Your roof is in really bad shape. He said in the report, three to five years lifespan left on the shingles. At yes. least. Yeah. Absolutely not. Yeah, we got five months, maybe. Dominic and I were downstairs in the basement, and it was a really bad thunderstorm. And Chantel just heard something. Like somebody had running water on, and I ran upstairs. And uh, in my son's bedroom, there was a uh, like a bubble, the drywall totally bubbled out and it was like shooting out like a fountain. Had to grab towels and yeah, buckets, buckets and just to catch the water. You had an awful lot of water. You can actually push on this drywall and move it. Uh, well, we can and see it, that yes, it's come it right down. down. It's, it's actually totally, staying the wood, right? Yeah. My worry is how long has it been wet up there? Has it been continuously? Was the insulation holding so much water that it's just mold galore growing on top of this? Has it now also put mold up along the sheathing? So on the underside of the roof line, I have a lot of concerns about mold in your home at this point. Let's go downstairs. OK, so there's no handrails going down. Did you notice that? Um, yeah, we, we didn't notice that until we had our first visitor that was an older gentleman and almost fell down the stairs. 
You gotta have handrails. Because yeah. if he had a fallen down the stairs, he has the legal right to sue you, and you know your insurance is gonna have to pay out, then your insurance goes up, and we can go on and on. <laughs> I'd like to see the electrical panel. Yes. Oh, boy. Okay, living room kitchen on one fuse. Did he even talk about this? In terms of the electrical issues in the house, I mean, dishwasher's going, we're trying to heat up, you know, food for the babies or what have you, and all of a sudden, half the kitchen is done. We have issues right here. One, your house is overloaded the panel. We have an air conditioner, okay? We have a stove upstairs. We have all kinds of new pot lights and everything else. And how many do I see on this? Empty, empty, I love this. Yeah. Empty, empty, and we shouldn't even have that. They should have dummies in there, because you just stick your finger in there and it just doesn't feel good. See, this is a bad sign. Not only do we have all this, we have an addition. Yeah. I didn't think it was this bad. These are glaring things that, at least to Mike, that uh, the inspector should have said something and ended up saying nothing and told us we were getting this great house. Well, obviously, it isn't that great. Wow, look how hot it is in behind there. I'm showing all kinds of hot air coming in the wall here, and I'm seeing bleeding of air. So now it tells me I have to open up this area to take a look what's going on. So there's leakage. When the weather changed, when it did start to get colder, we felt drafts all over the place in the kitchen, uh, downstairs in the, in the basement, in the addition. You told me it's freezing cold. When you walk from here to here, that's not a good sign. That's really not a good sign. Then we look at the registers, because that's what just, I want every inspector to do this. And I'm talking home inspectors. Why do you have tape here? Uh, that's where asbestos. we found the asbestos. We wanted a light in the dining room, so the electrician came in and put in the light in the dining room. And uh, we explained to him about the heat source or the lack thereof in the addition, which is in the living room. He lifted up our vent covers and he found the asbestos between the ductwork and the floorboards. At that point, I went a little haywire and I checked every single vent in the whole house and I'm really nervous now. And uh, it's lining every single vent in the whole house. So the home inspector said that, in his report, he said, uh, in terms of asbestos, it's beyond the scope of this inspection. They won't even pull up these things, and it drives me nuts. No, yeah. pull it up, take a look. Right. But they don't have to. He's not qualified to look for asbestos, but some of them have knowledge about it. But he does have in the report uh, that they don't look for asbestos and that you should bring in a, a professional to take a look, because they really don't know. And I'll tell you right now, this house being in the 1960s has the possibility of asbestos in the plaster. Mm. That means before I touch it, I'll have it checked. Right. Mm -hmm having young kids moving from mold to now asbestos and how much more damage is this doing to the health of our children. I'm not gonna break any of the walls open till I know that there's no presence of asbestos within the plaster, but it's in the ductwork, right? Now, it was a wrap around the ductwork to help keep your heat in the house, which you don't have, which means I gotta check all kinds of things. So Right now, I'm gonna go through the house. I'm gonna, I'm gonna document it, take pictures, and look at everything else, and hope to hell I don't find anything else. But I need you, while I'm doing this, to find a place to live so I can fix your home. Whatever okay. you need. Okay? I feel like um, a failure as a parent to, you know, bringing them in here into an unsafe environment for them. Waking up in the morning and the minute you, you know, come out from under the covers, I can almost see my breath. That's how cold it is, you know. And even in the baby's rooms, uh, we have to, you know, bundle them up to go to sleep at night. You can barely feel the heat getting up there. You know, these are one of these houses that uh, just buy an illusion, man, where it just it looks good. I love the area. And then you, you start to find out what's wrong with the house. I'm worried. You know, I'm worried. This is going to be a very big job. I saw nothing in the report about the flat roof here, the flat roof here, and the only thing about the roof was uh, visible by binoculars and roof is three to five years. There's all kinds of ripple shingles right here, all kinds. And no, this doesn't have three to five year lifespan, that's for sure. We're seeing all the shingles are cupping. When they start cupping, it means the shingle's old, needs to be replaced. Great sign to look for. So for the home inspector that had binoculars looking at the roof, you'd think he'd see that the roof needs to be replaced. 
and no venting in the soffit whatsoever. Really bad sign. Really bad sign. <laughs> okay. That's not good. That's really bad. This beam should be resting on brick. It's not resting on the brick. So, what is holding it up? I have a structural issue. I did not read about this in the report. So we're not having a, a structure pickup from the house. We're relying on the posts now. We noticed that uh, the flashing that was put up around the posts, odds are it was simply because some of them are rotten out and they want to cover it up. And once again, a home inspector is not going to do this, but I am. Let's look at the structure. As we go up, there's no angle ties from the post to the beam. They're not lapped in or notched into the beam to hold it. So as I look all the way around, there are no angle brackets. So how well is it secured from the beam to the post? If it's not properly done, can this come down? The answer is yes, it can come down. It's not rotting totally. It is rotting, you know, because that's a dry rot. It is falling apart. This is a simple 4x4 four four post with a 1x4 and clad it on this side and then this side to make it look a little bigger. OK, that 4x4 four four is just sitting on what? Actually, it's not a good sign. So it's the angle that's holding it, but there's no vertical support. I'm going to go to the furnace room. We have the meter on the inside of the house, and it's a new meter. Normally, we want those on the outside of the house. In this case, they now got to come inside to read the meter, which I'm sure they're not too uh, happy with. I'm going to use the IR camera. I want to see just how hot the box is. Ooh, not a good sign. The IR camera is telling me that these two fuses right here are really hot. And the other fuse is right here. So this fuse and these two fuses. Why are these fuses so hot? Just how hot are they? They are super, super hot. So it's as simple as this. I know it's hot. I know it's wrong. I'm going to bring Frank in. Well, right now, if I scan across the wall, I'm looking for changes in, in, in temperature, right? So as I come down, I'm seeing a big yellow spot right here. I'm having escape air in the floor joists. Because I don't see the, line, the lines coming up this wall and through the floor. They're probably coming up off the trunk that's in the basement, all that bulkhead across. But it's telling me there's heat escaping. And you know, it, it totally makes sense to me because if they're freezing cold upstairs, I have a breakage somewhere. But it's not blowing where it's supposed to. What does that mean? More damage. More damage. I like back splits because they give the uh, crawl space storage. And I really like that. Oh, isn't that stupid? Look at how they did this. So there's the discharge from the dishwasher as it goes across, ties into another hose, and then goes right into the Y. By code, this must be before the trap. The problem is that methane gas can actually escape from any small hole or anything to do with this uh, drain line. I'm not lying down on a job. This is just the way it is. You can see asbestos right at the top where the boot goes through the floor. It's clear. I can see it here clearly. So all I really have to see now is the attic above the room that was leaking like crazy. And this will help me figure out what I need to do next. This is not a lot of room. I do see a lot of moisture on the bottom that has traveled down, and that's probably because of not enough airflow. Whoa, all kinds of leakage. If the home inspector knew what he was looking for, he'd clearly see that. Oh, I've seen enough. The next day, I'm going to wreck the place. I think from his report, uh, having him say it's a great house, I think put our mind a little bit more at ease. OK, now I'm going to tell you, with the asbestos and with the electrical, you have a hazard home oh, for absolutely. you and your family. Absolutely. So you have a lot to worry about. Oh, yes. I'm glad you uh, put the tarp up on top of that uh, roof line up there just to save it. We've got leaking issues. Yeah. No, it's a quaint little house. I'm glad we're all ready to put down the cloths and yeah. we can walk around. I just want to show you a couple things. It appears we have all kinds of air leakage in this area downstairs, which possibly we're getting in the basement. We'll see. Uh -huh. 
Okay. Now, this is the, the one room that has posed the big problem and why we have the tarp up on the house. You can see all the, yeah. we had a massive leak. We're gonna pull down as much as I think we need to will be about here. Yeah. And more than likely open up this wall right across. That way it'll show us whether or not we gotta play with the other bedroom. Just to give us an idea of what's happening behind that leaky wall. Yeah, right? bit okay. by bit we'll start opening, see what we have to do. I'm not gonna let them back into the house until it's safe for them. Yeah. Before we can do any of this, we've gotta get rid of the asbestos. Pynchon found that it was only around the registers. That's it, it wasn't in the vinyl or the tiles, it wasn't in the plaster, and that's great news. I want the asbestos cleaned up before I bring my guys in to gut this place. In the registers found, this is like a quarter inch paperboard that contains asbestos. See this right here, about two inches wide, and that uh, contains asbestos. The guy's gonna suit up with the respirators and suits on. Come in, we're gonna spray this down, wet it as much as we can. Then uh, we're just gonna remove it. Vacuum everything up and then spray our lockdown solution on it. Guys, I just want to tackle the carport today. I want to tackle the beam at the back that's rotted out. We're going to start replacing the material there. Oh, wow. Okay. I don't think that beam's doing much anymore. Take a look at that, Yvonne. That sucker's hollow. Wow. <laughs> We're replacing this or what? So what I want to do, I don't just put a beam along the back end here and support that with a jack post, okay? all just rot from water. It's working its way behind the flashing that's up there, so it's been just dripping in behind this whole thing for a long time, and that's why it brought it out here. OK, this is the new addition. I guess you know that, because we have the electrical rad that's here. But I showed all kinds of bleeding on that wall right there, bleeding down the stairs with my IR camera. Uh, what did you find? I checked the airflow. Uh, when I first came in, most of the returns had nothing going through them, which concerned me right away. I went downstairs, put the furnace filter out. I got some air movement. Um, so filter was clogged solid. Return on the third floor, nothing. There's a cavity there. It looks to be blocked somehow. So you're thinking it feeds from this wall? It feeds from this wall from the crawl space and then uses the floor joists to come across into the wall. It's got to be blocked or disconnected. With the return being blocked, it's choking off air through the furnace. If the furnace can't draw enough air through the return, it can't supply enough air to the rest of the house. And that's causing poor airflow and a lack of heat throughout the whole house. There should be at least one return air per floor. Here we only have one feeding the entire house. No wonder this family's cold. So I have to find the source of the blockage, open it up, and get air back to the furnace. Mr. Gary, what'd you find? Not good things. Oh, I'd say. A little undersized? A lot undersized. So it's not feeding enough air to draw from upstairs down. We got a, a triple there, triple beam that's header that's running across. OK, so you can't cut structure out in order to make that a proper size. What can we do here? Can we move over? I can't move over because of the where the next joist is. Then we don't line them upstairs. If we can maybe cut some of the floor out, and then I can come up in 90 in. Elbow it back in. Yeah. That's a great idea, buddy. So we're going to divert our return air from the third floor down into this duct, and then use the full cavity. Below the floor, we're gonna end up having to jumper box it, meaning put another piece of duct in to move it over to the next joist cavity on this side. They had a problem with air circulation here. This is one of the main reasons why we're gonna solve all this. Frankie. Hey, Mike. Now, my camera, I put the IR camera on it, and we had uh, these two fuses and this fuse here that was hot. Overloaded? I'm pretty sure you would be. Uh, wouldn't have been cold. 
Uh, for the kitchen counter plugs, uh, they're on regular circuits. That's so You don't have your splits. It's grandfathered. Recommendation at this point would be to rewire the kitchen circuits for sure, because those three that are getting hot, it's fridge, dishwasher, mm -hmm. and then your counter plug. But I don't like fuses. Uh, very, very old. We'll get uh, rid of this AC disconnect that's here. We'll incorporate it all into one load center. It's going to look beautiful when I'm done. The tricky thing is I've got to get that meter that's loose. So we're going to relocate that. We're going to place that outside, and we're going to... And straighten this up for them. Okay, thank you. Okay. Let's cut those nails out, guys. Let's get our measurements and let's cut our first piece, okay? Nice cut. Nice cut. Okay, guys, screw it in. And then we're going to start on the posts. What we've done here is taken out the original post, drilled a new one inch hole to accept our, our saddle for our six by sixes, which is the proper way to secure this to the, the footing. Um, we've epoxied in with two part epoxy, which is gonna harden up over the next 15, 20 minutes, and we'll be able to put our post in. Right there, buddy. This saddle will not only lock it in better, but it also keeps the post up off the ground and out of that pocket of water. It's gonna sit there and slowly rot it over time. Okay, here it comes. Final leg of the journey. So when we first started the project, this corner was high. Everything was sloping into the house. By shortening the posts on this side, we've now channeled the water from coming to the back of the house this way and to this corner, because what we're gonna do is drop a trough down this post and kick it out to the side, getting the water away from the house and out into the yard. Come on up, Mr. Belanger. This is the room in question, okay? As you can see, we have a leak here, right? Yeah. We already know we've tarped the roof. We're keeping the water out as much as we can. What I'm looking at doing here is removing this ceiling to about here, just before the light, okay? If it keeps going, obviously we'll take down more as we go, but I think it's probably gonna stop right around there. So we do have mold on the actual drywall itself, so we're gonna lose that, okay? It's a, it's a level of mold that we can actually work in as long as you have the proper face mask, safety glasses, everything, okay? So it's safe. Take your time. I want you to plastic and seal this room off completely with you guys inside of it. Get your tools going. We'll bag it at the very end, bring it all out in one shot so we're not dragging open bags through the house. Wow, look at this. That is not a good sign. I can only assume you had a crap load of water come in here. Absolutely. I'm really going to have to look through your home and beyond all this illusion of beautifulness because I think it's a complete cover-up, and I think it may have been covering up a whole lot of problems. Oh, my gosh. OK, so we've opened this. Wow. See, these are all your rafters. Yep. Can you see the moisture? Yep. yep. OK, and it's on every single one of them, right? You really didn't have a lot of venting in the soffits. So since it's not breathing inside, we're leaking hot air into the attic space, and it's cold in the attic space in the winter. What do we have? Condensation. So we're having con so much condensation, I'll put my money on this, that in the deep heart of the winter, you have frost galore mm -hmm. on all your plank boards that are there, all the rafters, and it's slowly drifting down and coming in. So we have more water signs from there than we did from the leak. The leak was just a, you know, just yeah. the found a spot and it came in. Yeah. So we need to pull out your insulation, really, because I don't like what you have in here. Yeah. They have bat insulation, a little bit of blown in. So you don't have enough. Yeah. We're losing heat. So we need to vent all the soffits. We're going to put in proper air vents in the top of the roof so we create that air cycle and get that hot, moist air out and stop the heat from rising up there. Now, we do have plumbing, electrical. we got to replace your whole roof and your whole flat roof. And we're talking lots of money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do feel robbed. Uh, our initial home inspection was a joke. It, it was a joke. It was comical. You know, Mike actually 
educated us on, on, on a, quite a few things. And the home inspector just, you know, kind of went through his list as quick as he possibly could and uh, grabbed the money and ran. Come on down, guys. So I really want to start dropping this ceiling. I want to see what the ductwork is like in this ceiling. Now, Mike, he saw a lot of heat radiating right here, so that means probably a disconnect in the ductwork. So let's try to find it. Let's start dropping this, OK? So what did I find wrong here? Almost everything. I can tell you right now, this was not done by someone in HVAC. And you look at things like this. So this is why Mike was seeing the big heat source right here, because this was just flopping open. Not the proper gauge metal and not the proper way to do it. They're getting major heat loss in this house. Uh, they slapped together a made ductwork right here. Like this isn't even real ductwork. They basically cut a piece of duct and taped it up together. I still want to take down this blackboard right here. We can see that this all chases in behind, and then it looks like it comes down. OK, we have gas lines. We have ductwork. Wow, look at this. Where do you think my hand is right now? So with the amount of holes we found in this ductwork, plus the blockage that we found upstairs, no wonder this house was that cold. Any air moving through that furnace just would have been lost in all these bulkheads. Totally unacceptable. Well, I think this roof seen better days, eh, buddy? I can see it. This is just basically disintegrating. This roof needed to be replaced probably five years ago, at least. That's actually probably some of the worst shingles I've seen in a while. Yeah, I mean, this is pretty f far gone. At this point, where we're losing a lot of granules. It's just really exposed to a lot of leaks throughout the entire roof. So basically, this is our preparation, um, our underlayment materials that we install before we put shingles on. What you're looking at here, that this uh, black or sort of charcoal grade colored material is a, like an ice and water membrane. It's an asphaltic material that adheres to the roof deck. And when we do nail through it, it actually seals around the nails. And we use it in perimeter uh, areas or any really um, vulnerable area um, to snow or ice or wind-driven rains and such. The light gray or white colored paper is a, a waterproof underlayment, but we use this as a roof covering in the less vulnerable area. In, in other words, the balance of the roof. This roof, for instance, as the shingles were faulting, uh, had it had some underlayment uh, on the entire roof, would have bought some time. So really just cheap insurance, low cost uh, underlayment systems that um, really extend the life of the roof and the performance of the roof. The attic beforehand was uh, kind of a hodgepodge of bats, rocks, all in, some blown. The proper R value wasn't there, so we pulled it out. We're going to spray foam the knee walls in here because we don't want any heat loss coming up, creating ice damming or anything like that. And now we're ready to put uh, cellulose back in. Uh, for depth, we're going to put in about 13 3 quarters, 14 inches, given R50. Before we started doing the panel change in service, Hydra's already disconnected the power, so we're uh, we're good to go. It's barely on the wall, this uh, old panel board. We're barely even moving it, it's popping right off. Uh, this is a fuse panel, and we're putting in breakers. It's easier for homeowners to operate. It's just on off. The meter was on the inside. We're redoing the whole service. We're putting the meter on the outside. That's the way Hydro wants it. Good. Good, thank you. OK, so this is my uh, a dishwasher drain um, from the kitchen that's above us. There are common mistakes that people make, but then there are also the, the dumbest, and, and this is one of those, connecting your, your, your dishwasher fixture right into your venting system where you have 
you know, your bathroom connected to. So um, every time somebody flushes a toilet, the sewer gases have absolutely no restrictions. They'll just come right up to the, the dishwasher and get into the kitchen. In my opinion, this is a basic plumbing error that was missed. OK, I've reattached the dishwasher properly. Uh, that solves all the problems related to the kitchen. Uh, it's connected properly before the trap, and everything is taken care of. The fridge by code needs to be dedicated, which it isn't. So one of the wires is going to be for the fridge. The other one is going to be for the dishwasher. The counter plugs were overloaded, um, so we're going to rerun new wires for that as well, and that'll take care of all the issues in the kitchen. Today we got a little bit of work here. We got to patch up these holes we found that were leaking in the bulkhead. We've reattached the patch to the duct. They had one here existing. What they did when they put it on was they just, they just taped it on. They didn't put any screws to it. So we've put some screws to it, taped it up. We're putting some sealer on each duct connection. Basically, it's going to eliminate any leaks that are coming through these connections. We don't want that leaking into a bulkhead. Let's utilize it, get it up to some other rooms instead of leaking in a bulkhead. Uh, we also got some heating runs that we need to change. Uh, just shoddy work. So we're going to repair those, get those done. Also, when we were taking this off, we found that the, the return is open up in this joist cavity. They also have another one here that was open in a cavity with gas pipe. It's not a good mix. Right now, we've tested it's not leaking. But if it does leak, it's a possibility of gas getting drawn back into the return and getting drawn back to the furnace. And that's potential for an explosion. So we'll get these all closed off, sealed up, so nothing's leaking. things better for us and for our family and me as a father allows me um... peace of mind yeah seams first with the mesh tape. The reason why Robbie and I are uh, filling this first is because there's a lot of differences in the two drywall. There's uh, a lot of plaster and concrete on this one. And uh, we want to fill it first and then tape it. That way we get a nice even surface. There's not going to be any bubbling. Uh, once we tape it, there's not going to be any cracking. That way we get a nice even surface in the end. So right away, we know that these windows aren't working. You can see them fogging up here. They're wood. They're starting to rot on the outside. They have no insulation around them. Like, just feel them. Yeah. I can feel the cold air, and I'm, what, yeah. six inches off this window. So we're going to replace the windows. Oh, there's no nails holding this thing in. It's just falling right in. What they've done is put it in with the brick mold, but they've never uh, properly fastened the window on the inside. The brick mold was the only thing holding it in place. Yeah, like, you think got the brick mold and the whole frame just wobbled. Well, you would want to fasten your jam, which is this piece right here, into your 2x6 framing or 2x4 framing. That way it won't move as much, and then when you foam it, it's not going anywhere. Uh, the insulation is compressed, too, so it loses its effectiveness when it's compressed like that. So, yeah, there were a lot of gaps on the insulation. So it wasn't uh, done very well. Well, 
looks really good. Nice windows, guys. And you've spaced it out perfectly. Lots of insulation around it. Yeah, lots of foam. Well, this would make it a lot warmer than it was, guys. Thank you very much. Yeah, it looks good. Along with getting rid of the fuse panel, we had to redo the service. We had to relocate the meter here to the outside. Install the brand new 100 amp box. As you can see, brand new pipe work all the way up and over. The only problem that we have here that we can't fix is the fact that there was a split service that comes to the home next door and from the home next door, then they picked up this, this home here. They don't do that anymore. Local utilities nowadays want a separate run all the way through, so they're gonna have to come in and run brand new line from the pole directly to the new overhead service. We now have power, we're loving it. We're at the tail end, we're out of here today. With flat roofing, although it's referred to as flat roofing, and in action, a lot of manufacturers refer to it as low slope roofing these days, we want to ensure that there is some slope, that the water doesn't sit on the roof for long periods of time. Even with the better materials these days, um, we don't ever want to promote standing water. So whenever we can, we try to make sure that there's, there's sufficient drainage to get that water away from the vulnerable areas of the home. I'm actually using a magnetic-based primer. Uh, it's gonna go underneath the chalkboard paint. The more coats I do, the more magnetic you get. It's gonna allow the kids to put on any magnets, alphabet magnets if they want, if they have any uh, special sentimental magnets they wanna put on. Just makes it a little bit more fun for them. How's it coming, guys? Good, man. You guys have been living in this room for like three days. I'd say at least three days. You know what? Boys, I gotta say, both of you did a fantastic job because you had quite a significant, it wasn't a drop, but that ceiling came down and because it's a plaster work, yeah. it was all over the place. Uh -oh. I have to say, very good job, boys. Nice job, guys. Uh, thanks, Thank man. you. I mean, the thing I'm looking forward to definitely is the, the most is a safe home. That's the reason we bought this house. There's enough things in life we have to worry about. Mm -hmm. um, and you think that your house is supposed to be your safe haven from all of that, and that's what we're looking forward to. Okay, guys, last day. We got carpet going on. I'm really excited to get these people back home, okay? Let's have a really good day. Let's get them back home ASAP. Clean, wipe, just keep going. Welcome home. Hello. Dominic Chantel. How are you? Hello, sir. Home, buddy. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you very much. Welcome. How are you? No, no crisscross this time. I know you. <laughs> ah, we'll, do it. we'll do it right. That's why I waited, actually. Nice to see you again. Nice Good to, to see you. you. Take a look. Okay. Come on. Look. Oh, oh, you see new poles? Yep. Yes. Yes. It's six by sixes. You fixed up all the footings, so hydraulic uh, cement, they, they just nice and leveled it out, and then you epoxied in the uh, saddles that are going to hold the six by sixes bolted. Now, I love Steve Graves. Love Steve Grace. What did you do to your house? Three roofs. Wow. All brand new again. That in was a lot of work three. in this snowy time, yeah. yep. freezing yeah. cold. Freezing These guys cold. were up there. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. You see anything else here? Windows. I see new windows. Oh. windows. Yeah. yeah, I see Ooh. those. Yeah. Nice. Thank you, Thank you so Thank much. You. When they went to pull out the other window, do you know it wasn't attached? Oh, see? It was literally held by the trim. So once they pulled the trim, the window almost fell out. Wow. So packed with a little bit of insulation, which is a problem around windows. Glass is not a great art value. Right. But insulation around the glass is. 
You ready to go inside? Yes, absolutely. It's kind of warm in there. You want to go into the warmth? Oh, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Let's go home. OK. The fact that everybody pitched in and did their part for us and, and for our family, it's definitely a blessing. We, we couldn't have asked for anything more. Oh, look at it. Oh, wow. Oh, you had a new door. Oh, yeah. nice. Oh. Not only did you get a new door, it's a new storm door on the outside. We pulled out your chalkboard. This was the area that my camera showed that had all kinds of bleeding. So when we took it down, not only did you have a big hole in the main trunk here, absolutely every piece of ductwork in this ceiling right here had been compromised at some point. Whoever rented this basement had made his own ductwork, basically put it that way. So Gary had to replace all of the, the runs going through this area right here. Wow. Literally feels amazing in here in regards to the heat. Before, there was no difference from outside to inside. There's no There's draft. No draft. Exactly. My feet are yeah. freezing here. It's amazing. Well, Maybe walking around There's... in my underwear. Like something this. Out, like... <laughs> That's another show. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we did you a favor. <laughs> oh, it's that warm. It's very warm. Let me show you the laundry. What do you see on the wall there? New panel. Look New at panel? That. Nice. Oh, look at that. Uh, Frank, not only fixed electrical throughout the house, you have a surge protector on the house. Yes. Oh, We're big on this. Yes. This is really important because the surge protector, what's it going to do? It's going to protect everything. Yeah, everything yeah, it's it's not lightning blow. hits yeah. the house, it protects everything. Yeah. It blows that out and saves everything. Yeah. And it can be a lot of money, 15, 20 grand if lightning hits the house. Yeah. Just yeah. in electrical, motherboard and the furnace right through the house. It's all the little things that make such a huge difference. And look how neat that panel is. I know, it looks amazing. So much better. You got a new handrail, eh? Yeah, no, there wasn't a handrail before. This is great. No one no more well, falling down the stairs. It. Let's go take a look at Malcolm's room. Oh, wow. Oh, look at this. OK, the wildest thing about redoing something is that it really doesn't look different, right? And so about, we're all about what's behind all this. We took down the ceiling, all new insulation in the attic, making sure proper ventilation from the soffit, important. Mm -hmm. So we have a simple test. Now that we have all kinds of new insulation in the attic, the next time it snows like crazy, you're going to stand in the street, <laughs> you're going to look around at all the other houses that the snow is melting off the roofs, and you're going to look at your roof and see the snow still on it. That means we've done our job properly in your home. Let's go to the living room. Oh. All right. Okay. okay, it's not a fabulous new living room. Yes, it is. <laughs> wow. It looks amazing in here. You have a brand new baseboard heater, painted new windows, which was probably also the culprit of heat loss and right. cool air coming in, yeah. is why this room is so cold. So mm -hmm. that's a whole lot of people that came into your house, yeah. spent a little bit of time when you weren't here yeah. in yeah. your home, and now you're back home. Thank you for Absolutely. getting us back in our home. Yeah. Well, you're going to be warm, I can tell you that. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. definitely. The bottom line, it's warm. You know, you definitely felt a difference before walking from the dining room to the living room, and uh, now there's no difference. It's actually warmer in there. You know, it's yeah. really warm. You happy? Yes. Oh, More than you have happy. no idea. Thank you so much. Thank it's you. wonderful. You're welcome. Thank you very You're much. You're welcome. Enjoy it. From the bottom of oh. my heart. It's a new beginning for that room. It's a new beginning for this house. It's a new beginning for this family. You know, now it truly is a better environment for our kids to grow up in. Mike Holmes is our angel. We're home. We're home, baby. Ooh, it looks so good. Oh, so good. We need to move out. I'm getting this room. I'm stealing it from you. He's not moving up. I'd just like to propose a toast to the man, the myth, the legend, um, and his amazing crew. You guys changed our lives. we